Perfect. Well, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to my session on what's new in semantic modeling in Power BI and Fabric. So, I'll, so if you, in case you don't know, so if you're using Power BI and you've seen the data set, uh, we renamed it to semantic model. Right, so it's the same, same thing as a data set, but we have renamed it now to a semantic model. And I'll get into kind of why we did that here in just a minute. Um, so my name is Zoe Douglas, and I am a product manager with Microsoft. Right, so my focus area is you know, Microsoft Fabric for Power BI and analysis services. So what I'm working on is features around professional tooling in Power BI. Um, for semantic models and including the new direct lake uh, in Fabric, which is very, very cool. I'll get to that towards the end. Okay, so first we've, I've just released a bunch of new features for professional BI um, just recently, last month and this week. <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of get into some of those features. Um, but before we get into kind of those features, let's take a look, take a step back and look at the different Power BI experiences we have currently and what um, both myself and Rui, down in the front row here, have been working on to bring these professional BI experiences into Power BI. So Power BI is an excellent self-service tool, and we have excellent tools. Power BI Desktop, you can create your model, create your report, and use that PBAX to publish up to the Power BI service to share with your organization. So we're not saying you should do it a different way. Uh, if you're doing it that way, that's fine. It works for you. Uh, but we also are bringing in developer mode, where you can now save it as a project, put it up in a source repo, have that CD, um, CDIC experience built in now with Power BI, which has been one of the most requested features. Um, and so that includes like with Fabric, now you have those Git integration. Um, we're bringing in uh, code first, so Timdall to be able to author that model in code, not just only in Power BI Desktop. You can still do it in Power BI Desktop and you can go back and forth between these experiences and so you can do it for any, you know, however you want to get these things done, we have the tools for you. And now in the little blue boxes, um, we're bringing in some new features. So that's the Model Explorer and Cal Group authoring. So calculation groups were always available in Power BI, uh, but you had to use kind of external tools that do XMLA. So we gave tools for people to create, uh, so we gave these ways for people to create these tools to um, author these. So the XMLA endpoint is what's used by those external tools such as Tablet Editor and doing, doing DAX queries. And then the DAX query view, which I just released this week in desktop. And then we get into Direct Lake. So this is just showing, the, we named it to semantic model to kind of show that it's more than just your data, right? We have all these excellent features that you can utilize on your data that gives the amazing reporting experiences of Power BI. It gives it all that power is coming from the semantic model. All right, so let's look at the model explorer. So a lot of times you say, well, what is a semantic model? Well, I created a tree view and it explains all the objects that are in that semantic model. So you have your count groups, cultures, measures, perspectives, relationships, roles and tables. Many of these items had authoring paths in desktop already. You can create measures, you created your relationships with dragging and dropping between the tables. You can define that row level security in roles and assign them. And of course your tables contains all your data. For cultures and perspectives, you still need to use your external tools or XMLA endpoint to author them. But for calculation groups, we actually introduced a way to author those now natively in desktop. Another thing that we added, now we have this semantic model node, we can add some model level properties right here in the properties pane, right? So you can go and tell how to connect this PBX file. So the PBX file has that analysis services right there on your computer, right? You can connect to it with other tools and do, you know, write queries or do additional things on your model. So now you can grab that server and put it in those other tools as well. So you can have that full functionality. Um, we also introduced the discourage implicit measures because that is important for calculation groups. So, cal so with calculation groups, they apply on top of existing measures in your model, right? So, but if you've just dragged over a field into your visual, you've created an implicit measure. It doesn't actually exist in the model, but it does show that aggregation in the visual. So calculation groups will not be able to apply to those ones. So that's why this is, has to be turned on. We have to discourage. So if you already have these in your visual, it's called discourage because they're not blocking you. It's not gonna put the visual in an error. 
um, it's just going to stop you from kind of creating more of those. Right, so calculation group authoring. So here we have, in the, mo in the model view again, you can go ahead and click that ribbon button and create a calculation group. It will create it over in the data pane. Now you have a model pivot. That's the model explorer. And you'll see that here. So you have a calculation group column, which is just a column you can add to visuals. Allows you to pick which calculation item you want to use. You can create all your calculation items. They're defining that kind of logic you want to apply to multiple measures in your model. This is stuff like year to date, maybe a daily average, um, even currency conversion. Right, so you can define those all here. You can see them in the DAX formula bar. You can reorder them in the properties pane. And you can have in more than one of these calculation groups in your model. And you can specify how, what order they will apply to the measures that you have. So here again is just kind of that workflow. You start at the top, you're gonna to go ahead, click that button, have your calc group created, and then continue to author your calculation items. Um, I have some, I have a blog post that gives a lot of examples of these. So if you wanna know, if you wanna, you're not quite sure where to start, you can go to that blog and I'll walk you through time intelligence, daily averages, and currency conversion. Um, we also have existing documentation, aka.ms calculation groups. So because these are not actually, calculation groups themselves are not a new feature to semantic models. We're just now giving you the way to do them in desktop. So I have a quick demo, and I'm going to play this. So here I've gone to the model view, clicked on that model pivot in the data pane, and I just said, let's go ahead and create a new calc group. The discourage implicit measures has to be turned on, so we'll explain that to you. I can rename the column, I can rename the calculation item, I can rename the calculation group, just like you can with any other item in the data pane. Just double click on it and type in the name that you want. Right, so here I'm gonna do a total with no average. So you can have both the straight day, the, the column, the, sorry, the measure as it was before, and then you can see it combined. If you do it as a group by, you can see it with a daily average and a monthly average. The selected measure is a special DAX function that you can use in calculation items that will just say, replace here, right? So you apply this logic and put the measure DAX formula right here. So you can even do it more than once inside of a single calculation item. Now here I've added it to a slicer and now I can change, I've used fill parameters here with it so I can change a fill parameter to change different measures and then I can actually go ahead and pick my calculation that I want to apply on a visual. Right, so in the Model Explorer, we also have, so even though we don't have authoring password cultures, you can see them, right? So you can see if you have a culture on that model. You can see if you have perspectives. You can go and see what table you have that row level security set for. You can see, even in your tables, and we've also now organized those into little notes. You can see your columns, measures, hierarchies. All that information is now available to you to kind of see in one tree view in the Model Explorer. So as a side note, relationships is a big part of modeling. We've also given you an additional way to create these relationships. So from the Model Explorer, if you click New Relationship, it's not going to open up the dialog that you can get to if you go to Manage Relationships, the one you see on the left here. So if you click on Manage Relationships, you can click New, it'll have a kind of a blank relationship editing thing here. But instead, we're gonna give you the option to actually do it in the properties pane. So a few months ago, we added in a way to kind of click on a relationship line and edit in the properties pane. And now you can also go ahead and create them in the properties pane. Now this one will not have a data preview and it's not gonna validate as you click. So it's kind of a more advanced way to create relationships. And especially if you're using direct query, where you're concerned about how many queries you're sending to your data source as you're modeling. Um, if it's a little bit slower experience, this will give you a streamlined way to create those relationships. If you know exactly what you want to do, come here, tab through, you can type in, like if you're looking for an ID column, you can type in ID, it'll show you those ID columns and stuff like that. So this is also brand new in October. You have to enable the Model Explorer um, and you can have this new experience for relationship creation as well. All right, so that was all the stuff we released in, well, I released in October. There's a bunch of other really cool features as well. But now let's get into the one I released this week, which is the DAX query view. Right, so we're bringing in 
a fourth view into Power BI Desktop. This enables you to see and write DAX queries. Um, so there's a lot of parts to this. I have <laughs> a very busy slide here on all the different options. So you have the ribbon, which we have in all the views. We also have now a command bar, and that's going to have your run button. Stuff you don't want to lose, you want to have access to. Uh, we have the data pane. You can even see the model explorer. So you can go ahead and look at your relationships while you're making a DAX query. And in that data pane, we give you context menu options to do quick queries, where it will generate a DAX query for you on these items. So on a table, you can say, show me the top 100 rows. Show me the column statistics. Show me all the measures in this table. On a column, you can say, what are the values in this column? What are the column statistics? Right? So we make these really easy to create these for you. Now for measures, um, you can evaluate. So you can see the measure evaluated at the model level. It generates a DAX query where you can add a group by. So you can add in, say, if you want to see it by segment or you want to see it by month, you can quickly do that. So you can, it generates a DAX query, and then you have full control to edit it to what you're trying to get done. Uh, we have query tabs, just like the other views. These query tabs are also going to have status of your DAX query. So if you ran it and it ran an error and you went to another tab, now you'll see that one's still in an error state. Or maybe it's running in the background, or you've canceled it or it's ran successfully, it has a green check mark. We have the result grid. You can copy this and you know, paste it into Excel if you like. Um, we have, we're gonna bring in some more functionality on the result grid, but right now it's just gonna show you kind of the result of that query. And of course, we have the DAX query editor. So this is similar to VS Code, now available in, in desktop, and you can author your DAX queries here. It has IntelliSense, and it has some really cool features around measures, which I'm gonna get into in a minute. So let's take a step towards, so what is a DAX formula versus a DAX query? So a DAX formula, when you use the DAX formula bar in desktop, is where you define your measures and your calculation groups, your calculation items, right? So you usually say, you know, sales equals sum of some column, right? So that's a DAX formula. Now a DAX query is very similar to almost like a SQL query, where you do select star from a table, right? It's gonna give you a table of values. You can include DAX formulas in the DAX query, we can define them for local use in that DAX query in the define block, which is optional. And I'll get into that here. So, so a DAX query has, always starts with an evaluate, right? So if you have calculated tables and you're familiar with that, it's very similar. You just change out the table equals to evaluate and you have your first DAX query, right? So the def this is evaluate, it's a summarized column. So you're looking at country by three measures sales, cogs, and profit. Now, you also have an optional define block, and that's where you can actually define DAX formulas to be used in this query and reference them just like model measures, right? So that is a DAX formula. The sum of fact sales is a DAX formula. Now, if you have that one in your model and you have it here, you can actually modify it here and see it locally, and it won't actually adjust your model measure. But then it will give you some quick actions to use in here called a code lens, that puts some text above, and you can save that back to your model once you're done um, making some changes. So let me quickly show a little demo of that. So here, I am in that fourth view, DAX query view. And we give you a sample query right out the gate, right? So you can do just a quick evaluate on one of the tables in your model. And now I can go in and do a quick query to any other table and do uh, you know, top 100 rows. You can modify it to bring in more rows, we can do column statistics. So you can see DAX formulas for a whole bunch of statistical columns. And then we can go to an individual column. And now I'm gonna go say, what's some, you know, what country's in my model? Now I can see what countries are in my model. I didn't have to create a visual to do that. Now we go to a measure, I can evaluate it, and I can hover over that measure, see the definition. I can use this light bulb quick action to now populate that define block for me. And now I can just go, oh, I see four measures, and I can edit them all at once. I can make changes, I can run it, and I can save it back to my model when I'm ready. Right? So this is a brand new measure kind of workflow. Right? You no longer have to click around to get out of context. Now, visuals all have DAX queries, and you can access them through the performance analyzer. You could do this before, you could just copy it and use it somewhere else, but now we can just run it directly in DAX query view. Right? So something's not right with that visual, you wanna see the data it's bringing in, you can go ahead and do that. We also brought in DAX formatting. This is in Power BI Desktop. 
So if you're offline, it's going to still work. It's going to format that DAX for you. All right, so there's a lightning fast demo of DAX Query View. Um, Let's see. Now, this is this measure workflow that I was telling you about just a minute ago, right? So now, previously, when you're editing a measure, you go to the model view, you go to the report view, you click on the measure in that data pane, you see the DAX formula bar, and you'd edit it there. But now, in DAX query view, you can go to that quick query on a measure, and you can, you can even do, uh, if you do all your measures in a model or all your measures in a table, too, um, but on an individual measure, you can say, okay, just evaluate this measure. I want to see what this is going to return at a model level. It's going to put that in a summarized column, so in DAX query view, so you can see it. You can add group by column, so if I want to see that by segment, I can. But now, if it doesn't have a defined block already in your DAX query, you can click on that measure, and you get that light bulb quick action. So you see that little light bulb? You can click on it, and you have the option to build that defined block. And now you can edit it, right? You can also define with references. If you're doing a profit margin or some other things, referencing five other measures in your model, you don't have to click around anymore. We'll see them right there, right next to each other. You can edit any of them in that view and then run it and see how it's going to evaluate uh, with that change in an underlying reference measure. All right, so once it sees, now in that define block, if you change, if it's already in the model and you've made some change, it knows it's different from what's in the model. It'll prompt you and say, hey, do you want to update this? Do you want to overwrite the model measure with this new DAX formula? So you can quickly say yes. If you, you can even create a measure that doesn't exist in your model in this defined block. And when you do that, it's going to give you one that says, update model, add a new measure. So it can see this one doesn't already exist, and it gives you a quick way to add it to your model as well. So this is a brand new kind of measure workflow. Now, if you're clicking around and you're like, oh, sorry, this light bulb is not showing when I have my measure in my DAX form query, it will not currently show if you already have a defined block in that DAX query tab, right? Now, all the quick queries, when you click on them, they're always going to create in a new query tab. So they're not going to kind of insert it or anything like that. If you want to combine them, you can, do it your, um, you can do it afterwards. You can copy and paste and everything like that. Uh, but they will... It's kind of fast, so maybe a lot of times when I first show people, they're like, oh, where, where did my other query go? I'm like, well, it's actually still there. It's just we just create a new tab for you. And that way it always runs. We also did not add the co-pilot for November, but it is coming early next year. And I wanted to give you a quick preview of this. I showed this at Build this year um, with kind of with a comment. So you'd make comment and you say, you know, show me the products by profit. But now we're actually going to introduce kind of an inline co-pilot experience. It's going to have a little chat bubble that comes up just like in VS Code. You can type in your prompt, and it'll generate that code above. Um, you can also ask it. You can highlight a query that was already created by maybe you last week. And maybe if you're like me, sometimes I create stuff, and then I look at it a few days later. And I'm not quite sure what I was doing. Um, I can actually select that and say, hey, what is this doing? Um, or maybe my, my friend helped me, and I need my friend is not available right now, and I wanted just to explain what's happening. Um, Copilot can help you do that as well. Uh, other things it can do is also talk about DAX functions. Maybe you're like, oh, why did you put a select column there? What is the value of a select column? You can ask Copilot, hey, tell me, tell me about select columns, and it will, right? So this is coming early next year. Um, another one that we're working on, and now that I'm a Copilot topic, is um, this one's not out yet, but it's coming soon? Is measure descriptions with Copilot, right? So we want a way to kind of ease the documentation burden. These descriptions on measures are very important to report builders using your model, right? So where you would normally add this description in the properties pane, now you'll have a little button that you can click. And you can say, hey, Copilot, can you help me build this description for me? It's going to look at your, your DAX formula, and it's going to say, this is what it's doing to help people understand what's happening. Because when you're in report building, you don't see that DAX formula anymore. The description is going to help them. So you only see the name <laughs> and the description. So this will help um, get that. Now, it'll do a dialog so you can see what Copilot has generated. You can say, keep it. And then you also can just edit it afterwards right there in the properties pane. So that one again, um, we'll, you know, hopefully for next month. So 
look for that one. So now we've gone over the new DAX peer review, we've gone over the model explorer, and now we are getting into Fabric. What is the cool thing for Power BI in Fabric? Well, now we have access to the one lake, right? So everything in Microsoft Fabric is in the one lake, which is awesome, right? And Power BI has access to that data in the one lake. So what is so cool about that is we can actually read the data in the one lake like it was brought into, so like you imported the data into the model, right? So it's in the same kind of format. With direct query, we had to translate from DAX to SQL. We had to go and ask the data source for that data, and it would bring it back for an individual visual, which is a DAX query, by the way. And then, but now, and then with, so with direct query, it was cool, you got the latest data, but it was a little bit slower because you had that translation time. Now with import mode, we had that data access available to us. We could read it, we could you know, compress it. It's in a format that really works well for DAX, but you had to bring the data into the model. So we had to duplicate the data and you had to schedule a refresh, right? So if you scheduled every day, every hour, every month, whatever you wanted to do, but we had to bring that data in. Now with one lake, we can actually just get that data directly from the one lake. You don't have to move the data, you don't have to schedule a refresh, and we don't have that translation time, right? So it says the speed of import, but with all the benefits of direct query, right? And so it seems really magical. Um, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> but so let me just quickly go through. So there's a little caveats to it, right? We're only doing one lay cast at the rest of time, and you have to kind of start these models in, in the Power BI service. So let me show you a quick demo of this. So I'm in my lake house. I brought in some data to my lake house. I have a script for this on my public blog. If you want to recreate my demo, you can. It says 3 billion rows. It takes about 10, 15 minutes to load this into, generate this data and load it into the lake house. It's very fast. I have a little SQL query shows as 3 billion rows in three fact tables. Now I can click that new semantic model give it a name and select the tables, I'm gonna bring it in. This is gonna land you into the model editing experience in the Power BI service. All right, so we're waiting for that to come in. Um, you can see some views in there as well. If you use views, they will actually fall back to direct query. So just be careful of those, those aren't gonna have the same speed. Now I've speeded this up, but I'm just doing regular modeling actions here. I'm creating my relationships between my facts and my dimensions. So here I have a bunch, I have three fact tables and I have three dimensions. So I created all those relationships. I'm gonna create a bunch of measures. One of the things I had in the lake house is I had a table where I'm gonna put my measures. So I have my measure group already created. So I'm putting my measures there. I'm gonna hide that column and it's gonna to go to the top of that data pane. I'm gonna go and format them. Now I'm in the report building experience in the Power BI service, right? And I've sped it up a little bit here. I'm gonna slow it down just in a minute, but I'm just creating some visuals. You see three billion rows of data. You can see it, you know, 1.5. I don't know the name of that big number, um, but now I can click on it and I didn't schedule a refresh. I didn't import this data anywhere, nothing, right? So it looks pretty fast. Now I can actually create that report in desktop. So that model is living up in the Power BI service. I can live connect to it in desktop, and I can create that same report in desktop using direct lake mode, right? So here, and now I have performance analyzer. So now I can say, okay, fine. How long is this actually taking to do these three billion rows? This is sub second, right? I didn't even put my credentials anywhere, <laughs> right? I signed into desktop, obviously, um, right? And so now I'm like, okay, fine. It's just a column chart and thing. Let's add some maps. Right, so I have one of my dimensions is all the states for US and Australia. And so now I can do some cross filtering, cross highlighting, and I can see just how fast this is. Right, I, there was nothing I cut out of the video, no steps I cut out. I sped up the model authoring, but right now and I can see this coming back all sub second. Except for that one, that was three seconds. <laughs> but then afterwards, if you click it again, it'll be sub second. So there's some little bit of caching going on. Um, but we have, this is extremely fast.
Okay, so I also, one of the cool things about Fabric and that lake house is it creates that SQL analytics endpoint, right? So it's basically in a SQL server as well, which is fantastic. You can write SQL queries, but it also means if you wanted to build off that same data a direct query model or an import model, you could, right? So I went and actually pulled this data as a direct query report in desktop and created the same model and then I create the same report for both of them, and I can see a comparison, right? So exact same data, it's just on that SQL Analytics endpoint, or in the lake house. So in a direct query mode, these were coming back in about four seconds, four to five seconds per visual. But when I was using direct lake mode, they were coming in sub-second, right? This is like, some of them were coming in at 48 milliseconds, like extremely fast. I did try to do import, to compare that as well, but I only got about 50 gigs in my import model, and then I would hit a gig on my Power BI desktop. Right, so this is about 20 gigs of data. Right, so this is phenomenal performance. Uh, I have another demo. This one is using the one that Christian did at Build. Same, the same, same idea though, right? So you, this one is using you know, showing those parquet files, showing how big those parquet files are behind these delta tables, right? So we can see these massive amounts of data. And again, you know, creating that model, creating those relationships. So this one, you can see the relationship dialogue's a little bit dated now. Uh, we have a new version out. And then now we just drop that data. Four billion transactions, making those visuals being able to cross-filter, cross-highlight. I didn't schedule a refresh. I didn't move the data. It's accessing it directly in the one lake. All right, so, so that was my quick fun on the new features I just brought out in October, November, which we had Model Explorer, Calc Group Authoring, Dex Preview. The really awesome feature with Fabric, which is the direct lake with Power BI. Have all your data there and make these reports off of it you know, seamlessly, you can access all the data. You don't have to do incremental refresh. You don't have to figure out, maybe I should do direct query import. You can just access it all right there. You can even add calc groups to those direct lake models. Um, the calc group authoring will be, UI will be coming soon to the service editing experience. Right now, I can only do an XMLA. So some of the other things that we brought in recently as well, we have the optimized ribbon and desktop that came out earlier this year. So this way, if you are working in direct query, right, and you want to make some changes to the visuals, you don't want them to cont continually send out those data queries, you can pause the visuals while you're in desktop. Pause the visuals, add in all the columns you want, filter them in the filter pane, do any of those actions, and then when you're ready, you can go ahead and have those visuals start going again. Right? Um, you also have these optimization presets. So if you have an import model, you have direct lake model, and clicking, you know, clicking one visual, having it impact the other visuals is great. Keep it in interactivity mode. But if you want to limit that behavior to stop sending queries to, your, to the data source, you can actually go into query reduction mode, which will stop the cross-filtering cost highlighting. Right, and then we also added an apply all slicers button and a clear all slicers button, which I don't have a demo for in this one. Um, actually, no, I'm showing it right now, I'm sorry. So here, you can do all your slicer changes at once, and then when you're ready to apply those to your visuals, you click one button and apply them at once. So you're no longer waiting for each click, the visuals will reload, the visuals reload. We also have, um, so this is that relationship editing in the properties pane. So we have the new one with relationship creating in the properties pane that just came out. But we had added earlier this year, you can just click on that line and edit it in the properties pane as well. You can also multi-select, delete them, do changes to multiple lines at once. Okay. So the other one I wanted to show you, but my computer seems to be having a little bit of trouble right this second is we also added in the dynamic format strings for measures, right? So you have dynamic format strings, which is just basically another DAX formula to define what you want, how you want to display that value. We want to display it in millions or in, you know, K for thousand, M for millions, 
that kind of stuff, you get to define that, right? We're not going to force it on you. Um, you can define exactly what happens. You can with these dynamic format strings for measures. Calculation items already have this built in, right? So you can do it multiple measures with a calc group, or you can do it on an individual measure as well, right? So we have a quick demo of this guy. So we have these, you know, long range of values. We want to just say, you know, for the thousands and for the millions, we want to have them formatted differently. You can do that right here, right? And this is already in desktop. You can go ahead and do this today, right? So there's a lot of information about, available out there about this. So you can get to your direct lake, optimized ribbon, editing relationships, and the very cool DAX query view that just came out. You can get a lot of information about there. Um, the DAX query view has some more documentation coming soon. Look for that next week. Right now, we have it in the blog article. And then in the next coming weeks, I'm going to do a deeper dive blog on the Power BI form. Um, and then we have, so was that a question? For DAX query view, free. It comes to Power BI desktop. Now, the Copilot is going to be under the Copilot. We have the documentation with that. Um, but typically, it's, in, it's going to be the F64 paid capacity and at P1. Um, we have information on the developer mode and Git integration available. So yeah, so thank you very much. And please provide feedback for this session. Thank you.